Verse 24, and it came to pass about three months of new moons after that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is the child of harlotry from idolatry. So Judah said, bring her out uh, and let her be burned. So clearly judgment is in order uh, yes. for this, this lawless act. Verse 25, when she uh, was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man of whom these belong, I am with child. And she said, please determine by intently looking at and scrutinizing whose these are. The signet, which is a seal, and cord as a twine bracelet, and staff of a tribe for chastening and correction. That one got my attention. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a lot in there about that. Mm -hmm. So Judah acknowledged in verse 26 by intently looking at and scrutinizing them and said she has been more righteous and clean than I because I did not give her to Shela, my son, and he never knew her again. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? For Ruk Hashem. For me, when I was when um I believe Yahweh gave me this as an example, it's people who have been put into authority. Today they call themselves pastors or rabbis, but they're more like a shepherd, like a Moses with the staff in their hand. And the staff is to keep people corrected, or to have uh, to be a protector mm -hmm. of the people. Mm -hmm. And it was so many different things uh, that came out to me, but I'll just uh, use two examples. In the, in the military, when I was there in leadership, they, they teach two basic things that help you develop yourself as a leader, you know? And, and uh, one of them was seek responsibilities and take responsibilities for your actions. And the other was to set standards and maintain those standards. Yahweh has done both and has uh, enabled us through the Ruach, through Yeshua, to maintain those those uh, right. gifts that he's given us. But a lot of us, we like to give the gift over. And so we secretly go and do things by not even stopping to recognize because we've up there now as we discussed in the Korra film, how quickly you can get mm. above yourself mm. and then take on the authority and, and the uh, judgment upon yourself to towards others and not even perceive it within yourself. It's, it's more examples through the scripture, even with uh, our father, King David, was the, in the same mindset as Judah was. Right away, judgment comes in. Until you find out, oh, I'm that guilty person. So how condemnable are you on yourself versus on another? You know, how merciful <coughs> was he when he found out that, oh, the punishment that was for them really should be for me. And so Judah right on point you have to give him the um applaud him really right, right um because most people would say that's not mine and still try to cover it up further so the righteousness that was still within judah to um exemplify uh bring out itself to me was a uh how would you say it it wasn't an example how I should be. An you act know? of humility. Yes. Yeah. It, it, you should humble yourself and say, oh, man, I was so quick. It, and it, I for, how quick did I forget about the it, wrong that know, I did? You know, uh, also what's striking me about what you're saying is imagine being in his position. Mm -hmm. OK, he's a leader. And yet you're having to humble yourself to a, 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 a prostitute. And admit she's more clean than you. Exactly. Wow. I mean, if that doesn't mess with your values in your head, but you have to be pretty objective and humble person to make that kind of an, a statement. Exactly. Because you shouldn't vow and not keep the vow, mm -hmm. you know. And so this this thing started out with a vow. And, and um, 
along the way, she was more clever than he was. Yes. You know, okay, if you're going to uh, deceive me, now it's my turn to deceive you. Ah, uh, good point. And, and right, so, right, right. so we have to watch out uh -huh. about the, the, the trickery that Satan uses to draw us in uh, uh, by not saying, by not thinking that we know more than what we know. I always the uh, uh, scriptures say, <laughs> be, be slow to speak and quick to hear. Yeah. Slow to speak and quick to hear. Judah tried to hide his stuff away and he tried to send back and pick and, and retrieve his stuff so that stuff will never be found. But scripture don't lie, say be sure your sin will find you out. And we yeah. today, we don't think about these things because we say, uh, well, it's widely taught that, oh, Yeshua uh, grace is sufficient, you know, so I can sin and I can just repent and it'll be over with. It's so far from the truth. It's <coughs> going to bring you out. If it don't bring consequences, the, the very thing it should bring is embarrassment. That will bring you to your knees and to repent. Is that not a law? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's consequences. You only have consequences if you have a law. Right. So obviously some sort of a law was violated and that's why it brought a consequence on him. It's, but he took it humbly mm -hmm. rather than letting his flesh rise up and try to justify what he did or hide it or conceal it or something kind of way like that. And he couldn't lie because it was his sickness. <laughs> It was his staff, <laughs> and everybody knew it was his. Yeah, right. So he had to concede. Right. But was he going to condemn himself and burn himself and say, well, burn me? Right. No, he was going to forgive himself. Right. So he was forced to forgive her. Right. You know, but how many of us don't do that? You know, how many will just, oh, I'm going to forgive my, my, my I'm going to have mercy on my mistake or my transgression. But your transgression, since um, you really don't know about mine, I can conceal mine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have mercy on yours, right, right. you know. And it, it's all, it's so much scripture to it. I don't want to belabor this, but right. that's really what he was showing me. Humility through your authority. Care for the people that he's put you in mm -hmm. charge of. Really care for them like, like he cares for the sheep. Yeshua, David said, Yeshua is my shepherd. You know, he the one that leads me. Lead them where they know that they're going down the right path. Don't deceive your people. Have a heart for the people like Yeshua has a heart for us. Yeah, that's pretty hard nowadays because most people I find are what I would say apathetic. Mm -hmm. You know, people write to me and stuff and, you know, I write back to them as soon as I can. I'm quite busy, but, you know, I write back uh, for the most part, unless I miss somebody. And I would say almost without exception, they never respond. And you got to sit and you got to think, well, what was the whole point of writing in the first place? You know, right. but, I, you know, I think that's just the condition of the body of Messiah today. I think there's a part of them that wants what they know they should be seeking. But at the same time, the devil is holding them back. Mm hmm. And this whole series that, that we're doing is all about enlightening the body of Messiah to say, listen, man, you know, how long are you going to praise this game as this whoring wife that's apathetic and just doesn't want to get off the pot, if I could use that vernacular? Right. You know, right. either go or stay. One or the other, do mm -hmm. something, you know, but just don't sit there. And you know you're playing the game. Right. You know you're playing the game. You're not fooling anybody. Right. You know? And it's like I tell people, I said, do you really think you're so smart that people who know better can't see through the the fog that you're trying to create, the facade, you know? Because it's just leaking out of you. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a whole kind of another story. Yeah. But that's a deception in itself that Satan uses.